It's just gone Halloween, and Halloween in the retro scene is the time of year when a lot of smaller developers and publishers want to put out something special, something to celebrate the date. This happens quite often on systems like the CPC and Spectrum, and today I'm going to be looking at the game the Mojon Twins have put out for both of those platforms. Now, the game is called Romero the Vampire 3. It is, I guess, the third in the series. I've not actually played the earlier games. Now, the version I'm going to be looking at is the CPC version, because I grew up with the Spectrum and the CPC, but I think the CPC tends to be overlooked. So the game is on tape. Um, you can find it on their website. It's developed using their own MK engine, MK1 engine, I believe, it, um, which is open source, and you can also develop your own games with it, with a lot of people do. So uh, let's load it up then. So you're going to get some tape noises. Um, so apologies for this. It's going to be a bit unpleasant. So I'm going to speed through it in a second. There we go, some nice green Halloween, green and black Halloween loading bars. Now we should get a title screen in a moment. There we go. And you say a very, very green title screen. No, this is not on a green screen CPC. This is just their choice of palette for the, um, the screen here. And I think it's quite similar to the ones that the, uh, the previous Romero games used. Uh, but then that's their character, isn't it? So let's speed it up. It's a 2 minute 20 second loader. I'm going to go through it a bit more quickly. Uh, almost done, almost done, almost done. And right, let's do the keyboard toggle so I can use the keyboard properly. So here we go. Remiro El Vampiro. Now, um, the, uh, the Motron Twins are a Spanish team, so primarily the games are released in Spanish, but there's also English versions. Their site is mostly in Spanish, but you can find what you need to find. And there you go, on the title screen it clearly says it's developed with the MK1 version, 4.8 engine. And this is um, the game they released Halloween this year. Uh, they have quite a few other spooky games. It seems to be their style, but uh, this one was the Halloween, Halloween release. So, you've got to go and get some food. Um, their story's always quite silly. So you can walk around and talk to the characters by pressing down. So, uh, yeah, that's one of them. Now, the thing to remember in this game is you are a vampire. Right here, I'm in the shade. As soon as I go out here in the sunlight, my health starts to drain, as you can see with the uh, little sun symbol at the bottom there. So you have to be quick. You can't spend too long in the sunlight, which means you have to really know where you want to go, or if you see shelter, take it, because once you're in shelter, your health will recharge again. So there you go. My health is, well, not health, because health is separate. Health is on the left-hand side there, and that you replenish in other ways. But um, the sunlight, yeah, you, you can't spend too long in the sunlight, because that one will be going down the whole time. So now we're in a cave. If you've played other Mojon Twins games, you may find some of the, uh, the graphical design here familiar, um, especially things like that moving platform there and the, some of the candles, spiky candles. Um, they've got a, a distinctive style to them. So, now, that's, controls here, there's a bit of momentum on your movement, which uh, admittedly some people might not like, but it works. It doesn't ever feel like you're not in control, and um, it makes good use of the, the jump too. A little tap will make you hop, hold it down for a bigger jump. It just feels natural. So what we're doing right now is we're going around this level and again somebody else to talk to here. This is Auntie Tamara. Um, she's got something silly to say too. So basically you talk to them, a switch appears and that opens a door up there. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to go through that door. So let's backtrack a little bit. Now I I do really love the pixel art they've done here. The, uh, the enemies stand out, it's appropriately creepy, it, it, it's got that good Halloween feel. I mean, look at these steps that look like teeth and fell off them. Um, you know, it, it's what you want from a Halloween game, isn't it? Or, you know, a spooky themed game, a vampire game. And it makes such good use of the, the CPC Mode Zero, which is one of the big advantages the CPC has, CPC has over the Spectrum, because this gives you a proper 16 colour mode, no colour clash, and, and you know, a, a good palette to choose from. Now these, once you go into these rooms, you collect the mushroom, and then it uh, spawns this bat that homes in on you, 
Uh, but these crosses actually replenish your health down the bottom left, so it's a chance to regain any lost health as long as you avoid the bats. Now I've cleared that room, and uh, I think we can go down here, can't we? Now there's no fall damage, luckily. Now you see there's another door there, so if I avoid this for a little while, and uh, hop up here, there's another character to talk to. Now. Sometimes I didn't quite recognise this as a character at first, but you see the characters always know these switches, so you talk to the character. In this case, we've got Fat Pat. Um, I'm talking about ice cream and bacon. I'm not sure about that. And then uh, we've got a switch. So we can go in that room, and much the same once we're in that room, I'm sure. Ooh, we've got hit by the skeleton. So yeah, there's a mushroom down there, and almost certainly when I get that, yeah, here comes that. So. Oh, and yeah, those, um, I guess they're spikes. They look kind of like candles. But yeah, I guess they're just um, bloody spikes, aren't they? I thought they were candles for a while. They kind of look like they could be candles, but um, either way, they hurt. And, and yeah, I've got to avoid this bat and time it so they can get on this platform. So you can lose a lot of health trying to get this health, but the door does not open again until you've collected all the health. So, um... You can't just sort of skip it. No. Uh, there's nothing else down here, is there? Is there? Uh, oh, no, there is. There is There is another person down here. So, again, we can do a bit of platforming on these moving platforms. Now, one of the things with the MK1 engine is it does allow the games to be written in C, I believe. So, you don't have to be an assembly whiz. The assembly routines they provide handle a lot of things for you. But um, otherwise, you can take the easier route when coding the game parts. Um, no, not super easy because you have to be very careful if you're writing, um, you know, C code on the Z80. It does not always um, use as little memory as you might expect. Let's put it that way. Nor is it as fast as you might expect. But uh, for this type of game, it's a good compromise. Obviously, no super smooth 60 frames animation per second animation here, but. If you want that, then there are other engines to look at instead. Now, the AY tune is, again, really, really, really well done here. So I think we've done everything down here now, so the only thing to do is to get out. But, um, yeah, one thing I like about this is there are multiple paths. It's not just one screen to the next. You've got to navigate the world, so it's a proper adventure. So... There it is, got caught. So now we're outside again, so the sunlight thing comes in. And again, this is this is an interesting it's a really interesting time pressure mechanic because you can't just take your time over every jump. You kind of you're forced to sort of rush to the next next place that looks safe before that counter runs out. So six, five. There we go. I managed to make it here. Now there's apparently nowhere to go from here, so this is just a safe spot. We've got another, another cave down here, mushroom on the way. But that is what I'm looking for in any game, really. It's something that makes it stand out. Uh, you know, it's got to have its own mechanic. It can't just be pick up the objects, go to next screen. In this case, it's got that sunlight thing, it's got the different characters, and they give it a bit of personality beyond, you know, the personality that the game itself has from the theme. Um, you know, you are playing this game, you know you're playing this game, not another game. Now there's two bats in this room, so I'm guessing they're both going to come from it. Come for me. Indeed they are. Now your health can go down really quickly. I've noticed a lot of these things take more than one bit of health. Every time I hit one of those bats you see, it's taking about ten health off me, which is quite a lot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So yeah, I'm, uh, this room's almost killed me if I get out of it alive. Now, that, uh, that does feel quite punishing. Don't think there's any way it was down here. So, back up here we go. Oh, not that way. Oh, <laughs> bouncing on spikes is not advised. But yes, the, the Mojon Twins 
Tend to put out quality. Um, another Modron Twins game, which I did play, I think even on the Halloween stream I did last year, was Shaman, and that one is, is really, really good if you get a chance to look at it. But uh, this one, see, I've not played it before, and I am enjoying it so far. Can I get up here? No, I can't. I've got to go round. Okay, let's uh, take refuge under here. Um, and find a way out. Oh. There we go. Oh, into a skeleton cave. Now I've not got much health at all left now. Might be near, nearly dead here. The game doesn't seem to force any specific order on you in terms of which tasks you do. You can, uh, you've got a bit of freedom. Ooh. Do I want to do that? Do I want to do this? I don't know. See, this is where you start to panic because... Oh, and uh, that's game over. Hmm. Again, you see, uh, I apparently had four health left, four lives left, but one touch of that bat is enough to kill me. I do wish it actually um, showed you that had been reduced to zero, because it looks a bit strange on the screen, showing um, four lives when you have already game over. But, um, yeah, let's give this one more try. So let's just go somewhere else this time. Let's see where else there is to go. So I'm going to try and... Um, Let's try and stay as high as possible this time. Just avoid the mushrooms, see where we get. So, again, the platforming works. There's a good precision to it. You do always feel in control. Let's go in here. Uh, yeah. Say so avoid the mushrooms. I collect that one anyway. Maybe I should say toadstools, because they're more like toadstools, aren't they? So, let's stay the high road. I'm not sure if it's the biggest map in the world, but there is... Plenty of challenge to be found here. It said maybe it's a lot bigger than I think. So where are we going now? Oh, four. No four damage, luckily, because that was quite a long drop. Oh, what's down there? Oh. Um, change music. Um, talk to these people. Nope, they are... Are they killing me? Um, yes, they're, they're, they're damaging me. Okay, nothing to do down here. Oh. Get back in here. So, yeah, the platforming works. Um, say that it kind of. It feels like if you sort of towards the bottom of a platform and you jump into it, you almost feel like you're grabbing onto it to get a bit of extra height. So, you know, even if that, that jump wasn't naturally high enough to reach the top of that platform, as soon as I was within the platform, I could jump again to just pull myself up. And that works too. It takes a lot of the frustration out of the platforming. Um, and I think, you know, not having frustrating platforming is kind of an important part of game design in general. Go this way. No, that's so that's apparently that is a wall to me, even though the enemy can go through there. Um, maybe slightly questionable. Right, where are we going? Oh, uh, three, two, uh oh. So, yeah, now my health drains very quickly, and that's game over because I forgot to pay attention to the sunlight counter. So, yeah, this is Romero the Vampire 3. I quite like this one. It came out a couple of days ago for Halloween itself. And, yeah, you can find it on the Mojan, Mojan Twins site. And I recommend giving it a try. It might be one you can you know, clear quite easily if you put, um, put a little bit of effort into it. Um, I don't know, maybe it gets trickier. It's also on the spectrum, as I said. Now, I'm going to rewind a bit and have a look at something slightly older that caught my eye at the same time. Um, I'm going to switch this time to the, the Spectrum, so... And this one is All Hallows. Uh, this one I think is from 2018. Um, again, loading noises, so... Um, I apologise. Rise of the Pumpkin. Now this is done in AGD and... Um, yeah, the, one of the things with AGD games is they do tend to be kind of ten a penny. Uh, there's some good ones. If the theme works and the design is good, 
they they can stand out still, but there's a lot of them that really have no depth at all. I don't know why this tape's got extra noise on it. Um, but anyway, we'll have a look at this one then, because i played good AGD games, I've played bad AGD games. It's one of those tools that makes it really easy to make a game, and so uh, some people just go with the most basic mechanics, and um, that's it. But um, I've heard good things about this one, so... Rucksack Games presents All Hallows, Rise of the Pumpkin. A game by John Blythe in 2018, yes. So, uh, there we go. Now, this was apparently um, somewhat influenced by um, the rather infamous Cauldron 2. I'm sure that, that name sends shivers down the spines of some people. Um... But this one, uh, you, you're more in control. You, you just bounce around. You don't, um, you, you don't roll as much. And it, it's hard to. If you've played Pumpkin 2, you'll understand uh, just how difficult the controls are in that game. This one just has you automatically bouncing about the same height, which seems to mean you can only go up ladders, not down, unless I'm mistaken. Hmm. So yeah, again, that kind of makes this stand out from. You know other AGD games because it's got this control scheme of its own, and uh, that was a very quick game. Let's get it one more try, maybe more than one more try. So I want to work out how to to do this. It seems. So it seems you can't go down ladders because you're always bouncing. So you go next to a ladder, you're always going to go up it. Unless I'm mistaken. So that, that hurts you. Don't go there. That is just as bad. So, yeah, this is actually quite tricky. And, um, I'm dead again. I'm not really sure what the up and down keys are used for. I would have thought that maybe down would stop you bouncing. But then again, it just says at the bottom of the screen, left, right, M music on, off. I don't know why when I redefine it wants up down as well then. Um, I guess it's just a generic redefine function and the game doesn't use it. Um, so yeah, it probably just is left and right. And a key to turn the music on and off. Why do I want to turn the music off though? Now this this does not give you many lives. This is a tricky, tricky game. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get on first screen this time. But yeah, it's about timing the bouncers, and uh, yeah, I think this is this is quite an effective use of um, AGD to create something that does feel different. I've only got one line left then. Avoided that enemy. I'd say um, skillfully, but that would be a lie. This is definitely harder than the uh, the, the vampire game. Much harder. So yeah, I'm actually liking this one. I definitely preferred um, the first game I played, Romero the Vampire. But um, for an ATG game on the spectrum, this this one is one of the better ones I've played. Again, it's, it's non-linear. You've got all these different paths to go. And um, some really good use of colours. Not too much colour clash. There is obviously some, but... Um, you're going to get colour clash on any Spectrum game, really. Unless it's one of those fancy new engines. But... It's... I mean, it, the enemies are changing colour on the ladders. But it's not offensively bad, you're not, nothing's getting lost in the sense that, you know, in, to the point where you can't see it. How do you do this? Okay, there we go. The screen looks just as evil. Oh, well, that's a very warm pumpkin. Hmm. Okay, so, yeah, this one from 2018, I would say, is, is also worth play. And this is what I mean. Every year there seems to be some sort of a Halloween game. I don't know if this one was released on Halloween, but there's 
no end of Halloween themed games to choose from and there's plenty of really good ones. So let's have a look at another one from even earlier. Now we're going to go back to the CPC for this one. And this one's definitely more arcade inspired. And again, it was originally on the Spectrum and then got ported to the CPC. So let's have a look. This is Invasion of the Zombie Monsters. Uh, another tape loader, so yeah, I apologise. IOTZ on. Flashy colours. Nice title screen. I, I do love the CPC's purple colour. It's it, it's so, and maybe that's why I like the Halloween games on the CPC because that purple is a really Halloween colour. Flashy bars remind me of some of the Spectrum loaders from Elite. I'm uh, not a turbo loader this one, but I'm turbo speeding it through in main. Again, apologies if the loader is much louder than me. I don't know. Okay, yeah. So we've got a bit of a an intro on this one. In very Taito credits and score type. I think that red and white is very Taito look, isn't it? take over this mortal world with my army of zombie monsters and there's no way you can stop me this time <laughs> yeah that's that's what it says i will not narrate the rest of it uh quite slow paced for the intro but it gets you there and it's very well drawn it's not very often you see an intro like this on an 8-bit game i guess memory constraints usually mean it doesn't happen so I don't know if that means there's not going to be that much game. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a multi-load or anything, and this is on a 64km strat. Maybe they've just packed everything in really well. But uh, very nice intro of that. So, again, not one I'd played until I briefly just checked to see if it loaded in MAME. Because MAME's CPC emulation is, say, not the best, if we're being kind. But a lot of these games don't really push the hardware. They are more just about the style and the graphics, the art direction, I mean, you know, I can talk about things like a lot of the big name systems, and CPS and Neo Geo, weren't that powerful in terms of hardware, but the art is what made them, and that is kind of what's going on with some of these newer games on the home systems, you know, the, the, the art and everything else sells you the game, um, and sort of, you, you forget the hardware is not super powerful compared to some of the platforms that were around. So uh, what we've got here seems to be a very um, Ghosts and Goblins inspired game. There's a little map screen and it's not really a graveyard, um, but yeah. It's got scrolling, I'd say not the smoothest scrolling, but you know the, the CPC does not even have proper hardware scrolling. You can um, use some CRTC tricks to do some, but it, it's um, not 100%. I wouldn't really call it supported, it's more... You, you, there are ways, but they take a lot of memory, so sometimes this sort of more tile-based scroll, I don't think this is tile-based, um, works better. I mean, the CPC doesn't really have tile map as such, but... Um, it's, it's hard to describe. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay, it's again, it seems to be one that's potentially quite difficult. Um, is that checkpoint? Yeah, this is where I started at first. So, I think Caution might be the uh, name of the game here, although there's a timer. Again, uh, the bloody spikes that uh, look quite similar to the other game. Oh, uh, zombies don't mind about those. I thought some, I thought... Okay. So, yeah. Suitably creepy tune again. But, just just look at the graphics. Look at the, the detail. And the, the resolution the CPCs runs at. They get a lot of detail in these sprites. Back to the start and continue, which makes sense. It usually is the case, isn't it? 
Again, I never played this one until I was uh, researching for this stream, and um, it's been out since 2018, and I did a stream, you know, uh, last year, and um, this didn't turn up in my searches. That's just how many of these spooky games there are, and, uh, you know, if you're searching for spooky games, it's really easy to overlook some, even ones that are multi-platform. And it's out even early on the spectrum. But this one's 2013, wasn't it, sorry? So this one's been out even longer. So, yep. Yeah. Now I know covering um, home computer games isn't everybody's cup of tea on this channel, but, you know, I grew up with these machines and there's just such a, a, a great development community for so many of them. And looking at the software and, you know, Comparing it to other games is, is always a uh, fun time. Is that one that came before? I think it is. Um, so, say in this case, there's, there's generally uh, a bit of a, a ghost and goblins feel to this one. It's fairly tough. I mean, it's probably not that tough. I'm probably just bad at playing it. But take your time. You can only have, uh, like, I think, two shots on the screen at once, so you do have to be very careful. In fact, there's a duck key. Maybe I could just duck under that. Remember to use the keys at your disposal. Uh. Duck to jump, but um, show me an 8-bit game that isn't. Can I, yeah, I can duck under those. That makes things easier. That does make things easier. There we go. Now you see, I'm getting the hang of this a bit more. Very creepy tune, this. It's actually quite clever, because I imagine they're leaving channels for the sound effects, and this minimalist tune kind of helps them do that. Is this a boss? I think they might have a boss. Yeah, we've even got a boss. Wow. Yeah, but there was I saying there's probably not much actual content. Uh, oh, um, I think you might have to hit him in the face. Oh, it's back to the start of the level, though, isn't it? Will we see the second level, or will this be a fail? I don't know what the uh, red or green options are there. I really like power-ups, but um, I'm not seeing any obvious difference. So, uh, might just be something I'm not noticing. So, yeah, it's switching between red, green, and, and blue, and purple. Unless that's just an effect. So I'm not seeing any power-up. Again, I'd, I'd say, I think I've already said I do love the graphics on this. The zombies, the appropriately bloodied heads, and uh, they do look like they want to eat your brains, don't they? Oh, don't they? Tough. Ish. Really wanted to beat that boss, but if I fail this time, we will move on, because this is meant to only be a sort of brief preview of some of these games. Um, you know, so that if you like the look of them, you can blame yourself. Again, this isn't in the main soft list, but you can find it download. It costs nothing. Jumped into the enemy. Oh dear. Not most frequent with start points, but again. Okay, let's let's continue one more time because this is my last credit, and uh, it makes sense. It's it's limited the number of credits you have. Like it's a good idea to do if you're playing an arcade style game. I mean, I would highly recommend if you're playing 
any arcade game to limit the number of credits you have. Otherwise, you just end up credit feeding through them, not gaining any skills, and the games end up being unrewarding. If you actually have to improve each time to get further, you learn more about the game and you get better at it, which is important. I mean, if it's costing you real money in an arcade, you've got more incentive, and that's how a lot of these games, arcade games, were designed. And um, that's sort of what they're doing here by limiting the number of credits. Saying, look, you're going to have to learn it if you want to get any further. So, yeah, I would like this game that came out back in the day, that is for sure. Okay, it's uh, quite a few years ago now, anyway. But back in the day, as in when I had a CPC. You can't just keep firing. If you keep firing, you'll end up running out of shots. And, uh, say, you can't have too many on the screen at once. Oh, that was... <laughs> All the way back here. Trying to trying to rush it. Don't think we're going to beat that boss. Don't think we're going to get to that boss again. I needed to kill that one. Right, so that is just game over. You don't get to see the second level. Um, if you want to see the second level, find the game and play it yourself, and see if you do better than me. Probably not too difficult. So, Revelo Video Games. Yeah, good one, that. So, we shall move on to another one by the Mojon Twins, actually. And this is another release from this year, which is uh, interesting because it's actually a remake of a game they did earlier. So, this is La La Prologue. So, loading noises. Nicely drawn tattoo screen there. Now this is going to feel in many ways quite similar to the other one we looked at because it's the same basic engine, but um, this is the 2022 version of the game. So there you go, La La Prologue. As you can see, nice mode nought graphics, quite similar to Romero. So especially those moving platforms, you recognise those straight away. And the handling is um, is fairly similar too. In this case we're collecting potions. This is a, a lock there, we have to find some keys. Yes, there was an earlier version of this game which we will look at shortly. But this is the 2022 version which was released earlier in the year. I don't think this was released for Halloween. But again, like I said, they've they've got a lot of these horror influence games. It's kind of almost their style. And they, yeah, they're all playable. Now again, we've got a generous enough amount of lives. There's no sunlight mechanic on this. It's a less complex game. And maybe this is one of those that you might think is a little too generic, but um, there, there are good qualities to it as well. The map layout. It's not just, you know, move once from one screen to the next. You have to plan your route. And that, those, are, those enemies have quite a bit of knockback. You know, it's, again, it's it's got a few things about it that... I mean, you know you're playing this game. First time I played this, I did this jump perfect. There we go. So I did have a quick look at this one earlier too. So I wanted to see how it differed. So I'm moving the platform on. And there's the key. Anything else up here? On the roof. No. Can't be anywhere else. 
I was um, thinking earlier how nice it would be if somebody made a remake of the classic game Cauldron and just made the platform sections and that better. Um, Zypho, the one of the CPC streamers, well the mainstream CPC streamer, I don't think anybody else seems to stream CPC, um, did a long plan review of Cauldron and yeah, the CPC version of that has the exact same problems as the Spectrum version and basically any other version and that's the indoor platforming sections are atrocious and then you play games like this, modern platformers, you think how much better those platforming sections could and probably should have been. I need another key. Where am I going to get that from? I also tried to load the Enterprise 64 version of Cauldron in MAME and got absolutely nowhere with that because for some reason the um, Enterprise 64 scene seems to think that disk images should be just zipped up contents of disks, which is kind of concerning. Oh, I didn't want to get that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and also, even the discs that are in the software list for the Enterprise 64 for other games, I couldn't get loading. I don't know if support broke at some point or if it's never worked. So, yeah, I was going to stream that, but uh, I have to cut that one out of the schedule. doesn't work. Well, not stream, because this isn't stream. This is just a video recording, but... Yeah, I was considering doing a live stream for Halloween, but then... Uh, life got in the way. Things happen. You know, work, time... There's a key I want. That's why I've not been doing many streams. It's um, been a busy period. I think I needed two keys on that stream on that screen though, didn't I? So nothing else there. In fact, this is, yeah, this is the same area we were in earlier. This is the top of the same building. It's not quite as spooky as Vampire. Romero. So where are we going? I should really go up here in the caution time. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> it's a long pull. We're getting here at least. Ah, okay, go. Yeah, there's a... We climb the tower, can't we, to get another key? Surely. Uh, say fairly simple. Um, there's not as much to say about this one as the uh, the Vam the uh, Romero one, but uh, I'm sure you get the idea. No, no complex mechanics, no fancy lock-in rooms to get extra lives. It's it's uh, after that platformer. But the room design is good. I'd say there's that knockback. It really forces you down when you hit something. I'm so close to the key. Anyway, that is the 2022 release of the game. Now, that was mode 0, 16 colours, very fancy. There was an earlier version, which I think makes an interesting comparison point, because is the mode 0 version better? Ooh. Um, it's a matter of opinion, really, isn't it? So we'll have a look at the other version. Loading noises. Ow, ow, ow. So, um, yeah, we skipped the title. But, um, see, this one is in mode one, so it's four colours, but there's more detail. Um, again, depends what, what you like. But this is from 20, uh, 2010 instead, so a much older game. The movement doesn't feel anywhere near as smooth. In this case, the spider's knocking me up. So, visually you can tell this looks closer to a Spectrum game. I wouldn't call it a direct Spectrum port because it's making proper use of the four colours for every sprite rather than just, you know, monochrome graphics and the odd bit of colour. They've properly drawn four colour sprites. And um, that look does have a certain charm to it. I mean, I, I don't want people going, oh, you know, all mode one, four colour games are awful and should never be made, because that's just not true. If you look at the, the modern gaming scene, 
um, you've got some games coming out that are now in black and white. And those make me think, you know, why didn't we use the CPC's Mode 2 more? Why are there no games in black and white from then? You know, the even higher resolution black and white art, because it can look really good. So, it's just one to up there, does it? <laughs> this is trickier than the other version. Also, it pushes you up when you bounce on things, which probably isn't good for you, but uh, that's notice. I didn't notice any push up on the new version. No, they're, that, they're you around. And the controls here, yeah, def the controls here definitely feel a lot worse, unfortunately. It feels very sticky. Uh, it's difficult to describe if you're not watching. It, it doesn't mean it plays badly, it just doesn't play anywhere near as well. And said so that the screen seems to take longer to draw. It's a, a slower paced affair. I'm really not meant to be bouncing on enemies yet, places. Um, so, some people might prefer this, and other people might prefer the look of the new one. It'd be interesting to see a version of the, uh, the new game mechanics, new engine, with these graphics. But um, I'm, I'm guessing they're not going to do that. Because I'm probably the only person in the world who would want to see that. There we go. But the, the level layout seems to be roughly the same. Sometimes there's that staff in there. I guess that's extra health that you pick you up. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> see, I'm being bashed around. Throwing around like a little toy. It's got more of a, a cute look, hasn't it? Less scary, more haunted toys. Got my key anyway. But, uh, yeah, there. I mean, there are, there are plenty of other games I could have picked. If you watch my pair of Halloween streams from last year, you will see there's quite a few more spooky games around that time. Um, well, I think um, they weren't all Halloween games that year, but. Um, but there are quite a few that I would count. Oh, there we go. So, this one is Lala the Magical Prologue. Hmm. Well, yeah, this one's from 2010. So, a much older version, done in mode 1. It doesn't control as well, um, but it's still a good game. And again, it's good to look at the two versions side by side, especially when they're on the same platform. They went back and, and redid their older game. But um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end things here for this 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 video because it says it's not a stream. It's just a video of some new games on the CPC and Spectrum that I thought you might all enjoy seeing around this time of year. Especially if, like me, you weren't necessarily familiar with some of those older ones because you know I I, so I saw the uh, Romero release and then thought you know I'm gonna have a look and see. See what else there was that maybe I missed when I was doing research last time. And uh, these are some of the games that I found. Say several of these are Mojon Twins games, so I didn't have to look very far. The others I found through rec other recommendations. You know, it's uh, There's plenty out there, as I said. So look around yourself too, because there's bound to be the ones that I've never seen. Ones that are worth playing, ones that are worth covering, ones that are worth talking about. Um, so yeah. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll make some more videos. We may even get back to streaming at some point this year or next year. I don't know. Time depends. It depends on time, even. So um, that's it. Bye-bye.